Hello everyone, we're joined here by Timbers General Manager Ned Grabovoy. We'll get started with his opening remarks, followed by questions. And Ned, if you want to start us off. Thanks. Uh, and thank everyone for being here. Uh, just to start off, you know, I would say, obviously, it was an incredibly frustrating season on many levels. Um, and we could probably point, you know, to all the challenges and the adversities that we encountered as a group, but we, we do have to accept that we fell short. And to put it simply, it, it wasn't good enough. You know, so disappointing to be in here at, the, at this stage in the season. We obviously wanted more, uh, and we did not achieve that. All right, we'll open up to questions. Alex? Hi, Ned. Um, just curious about your uh, process of like order of operations for things this season. Obviously, a new head coach needs to be hired, new signings need to be made. Is it important to you to get that head coach uh, hired done first uh, so that they can have an input on the players you bring in, or is that kind of just a case-by-case -case and timing thing? Well, obviously, the head coach you know, is a, is a major priority, but the club still has to continue to operate you know, as we go through this off season, I think for us right now as a club, a major focus just on sort of resetting standards and expectations. You know, we need to have a clear understanding of what's being asked of all of us uh, and then ultimately try our best and do our best, you know, to meet those standards and try to exceed them. Ned, um, you know, looking back on this season, obviously you've mentioned it being frustrating for the group. Um, what specific, you know, areas of, of team performance can you point to that, that um, you're hoping to address in the offseason that seem to be you know, the, the biggest areas? Yeah, and it, it feels like five or six seasons rolled into one. You know, I don't know if everyone else feels that as well, but I think just major inconsistencies, you know, week to week. Uh, you'd see a team for 60 minutes that you wanted to get excited about, you know, and the, the next week, you know, not see the same things. I think we showed later in the season, you know, and credit to a lot of staff, you know, later in the season, uh, what what the team is, is more capable of doing, you know, on a regular basis. Uh, but I think for us, we need to find the consistency in the way that we play, um, how we manage games, how we manage leads. Uh, and, and another point of emphasis, I think, as well, is just the amount of goals that we conceded this season, you know, and having a team, I think, that's a little bit more difficult to play against. And in terms of the coaching hire, I mean, wh where do things stand right now in terms of, you know, timeline for what you guys are hoping to, to make the hire? And then, um, you know, is it down to a certain number of candidates? Where does it stand? Yeah, I won't fully jump into to the head coaching process today. What I would say is that we'll have news on that in the very, very near, near future, uh, potentially as early as next week. Oswald, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about the, the job that, that Miles did over the final few weeks of the season? And has he done enough to earn consideration for the head coach job? Yeah, and, and like I said, I'm not going to jump completely into to the head coaching process today and focus on the season and the roster. Uh, but clearly, Miles did a tremendous job, um, as did many, many other staff you know, that had to step up, take on bigger roles. And I think I can't speak highly enough about a lot of the people that we have in this building. Uh, I've communicated that internally to everyone. Of course, we fell short. Of course, we didn't have the success and the results that we wanted to see in the field. But for me, I'm, I'm proud of, of a lot of people that are in this building day to day because they showed what it means to be a part of this organization and how important it is to them. So Miles, in, in terms of leading that over the last 10 games, I, I can't say enough. I think that was reflected on and off the field for Miles. Amy, go ahead. Amy. Hey, Nick. Um, Coaching staff aside, looking at the players, have there been any updates on some of the players that had one-year contracts? Anybody who has expressed the need, want to retire? Anything with senior players yeah. that might not be here? So I would say we've got a handful of players that, that have option years. Um, not all of those options have, have currently been decided. Uh, the one option that we have on uh, Jaris Lavnia's GOTA uh, has been declined. Um, he will not be back with us, and obviously we'll support him in his rehab process as long as he's here in market. Um, we've got Sebastian Blanco and David Bingham that are both out of contract and free agents. We have had conversations. Merritt and I have had a chance to connect with Sebastian and his representation as well uh, to speak about the future, and I think everything that we do this offseason obviously has to, to put the team first. You know, and what, what's most important long term, and we'll look to sort of take those case by case, 
you know, as we go through the off season. Who's next? John, go ahead. Uh, now that we're on that topic, two things. One, the the way you guys approach those kind of conversations is directly with their can representative agents or a little bit with the player, letting him know, letting them know that you want them around and you want to talk to them about it. It's independent conversations. It's a one single conversation in terms of, you know, who knows first that you guys are interested about them. Yeah. It's different for, for, for each player, mm -hmm. right? And some players have agents, some players don't. Um, I think in a situation you know, with Sebastian Blanco, it's pretty clear the impact that he's had, you know, during his time here at the club uh, and a tremendous amount of respect, you know, for him and everything that he's done. And I think that's a, a, a unique situation in which an owner would be involved in those conversations. But Sebastian deserves that as well. Um, so it's, it's very different, you know, for, for each situation. You've got players in different stages of their career. So it, it can vary depending on uh, the player and the situation. And one more situation of those during the season, we have, you guys, have we saw a little back and forth with Santi and his representative. How is that standing right now? How is that relationship and, and the future of Santi, Ryan? Yeah, so we've conducted uh, exit meetings with all players, you know, and uh, had a really, really good conversation with Santi, a great meeting. Uh, we were able to bring Santi's mother here to Portland, someone he's really, really close with. And he's feeling really comfortable right now. I think he has a lot of stability off the field with, with his mother being here. And I've said it many times. I mean, Santi has all the potential in the world. He's someone that we care about. And he's a player, quite frankly, that, that we want to build around. So I think he's in a good place. I think he finished the season really strong. I thought he was one of our best players to finish the season. Uh, we look to bring him back next year and get him back to the place he's been in the last 10 games. In terms of the off time now that you know, players are not competing and stuff, some players may be more affected by it than others, for example. Um, Mosquera was being called out regularly for the national team. They have a FIFA window next month. He probably will need to be playing. Any kind of conversation on how are they going to manage that time is on their own prerogative to you know, use that time for yeah, maintaining it, the level? It's difficult because it's, it's not ideal. Um, it's a really long off season. I think even if we made a playoff run, you know, in my personal opinion for, for players, and we do have a handful of players that have national team uh, games to focus on. Uh, we're obviously having staff and coaches accessible to players. Um, some of those players have the ability to go back and train with their national teams, uh, and they'll look to do that. Players such as Christian Paredes and Miguel Rajo and Juan Mascara and some others. So we, we want to make sure we put those players in the be best position to continue to be fit and succeed because it is a, a lengthy off season. Ned, in terms of the off season, um, obviously, you know, you mentioned before that the team is going to have more flexibility than it's had in the past. Um, how, how, I guess, do you hope to use that flexibility and, and what maybe type of players are you hoping to, to target? Yeah, I think, I think right now we, we've got to take an honest approach. I, I think we have talent on the roster. I do think the roster is better than not qualifying for the playoffs. I, I think hopefully that was at least seen at, at some stage in the season. But then again, I, I, I think I've pointed this out before, it, it has to add up to something. And I'm not quite sure that right now it has. And we have to have a focus on total buy-in, you know, from every player, from every staff member, uh, to get this to where we want it to go. And so I think that's a main priority of, of ours this offseason and focusing on that in terms of individual players and positions that we might be looking for. You know, we will be in the market to look at DP attacking players. Um, we will look to, to try to add some, some depth and some players along the back line and in the back part of the group to strengthen there. Uh, and then ultimately as well, we have to, we have to identify, you know, some of the issues within the team and how can we improve and, you know, do we need to make some tough decisions and look to move on from some players. Um, I think when you miss out on the playoffs two years in a row, you have to take that honest approach. You have to have those tough de decisions and conversations. We'll do that. We've already started to do that. Amy? Yeah, um, kind of along those lines, have uh, the front office, ownership, coaching staff, have you guys laid out a set of metrics that you're going to be looking for as the new season starts to tell if the changes you're making are actually effective? Yeah, and, and we, we obviously have, you know, key performance indicators and things that we aim for. Uh, this is a club 
that strives and the goal is, you know, to not just qualify for the playoffs, right? So when we talk about failure, because we did fail, you know, qual just qualifying for the playoffs is, is not where we want to be. You know, we'd like to be in the top tier of the conference. The goal is to try to stay there over a sustained amount of time. Three to five seasons, I believe, gives you a chance to win an MLS Cup, and that has to be the goal. Um, and we've got complete buy-in support from ownership to do that. Uh, the goal is to put the strongest team on the field possible and build it as much as we can, as I think we've probably been in some a, a bit of a transition phase in some ways with the roster. So we have to re-strengthen, reshape, get it back to where it needs to be. Uh, and ultimately, I think when we're, when we're winning games and the team is doing well, um, I certainly know there's, there's no better place in the league to win. So that's why I'm excited at least to go through an off season, even after a difficult season, uh, to try to help put the team in the best position. Last question. Um, go ahead. You brought in Ryan Acosta in the last one. You talked about him having prior MLS experience. How much stock are you putting into that? This window, something the Timbers haven't had a ton of when bringing in new players the last couple of seasons. Yeah, a lot. I, I thought he was tremendous um, in terms of what we needed from him. Uh, we obviously had injury issues in that position, and to, to just say MLS versus not MLS, we need more leadership. We really do. We we, we have some talented players. We have good people. They are good people. They are nice people. We have good players, but we, we, we need some leadership. We need some experience um, and, some, and some players that know how to manage those big moments. I think when you look at the last game of the season, that was a big moment. You know, we, did, we didn't quite manage it to, to the best of our ability. We, we have to look in the mirror, accept responsibility. I, I do that first and foremost always with myself. Uh, we've got an important offseason. We've got to drive those expectations and standards. Uh, you know, and ultimately try to return to a better place. Ned, last question for me. The, the front office uh, hires that you talked about um, wanting to make in, in terms of your office, um, you know, where, where does that stand in terms of filling out, you know, those different scouting and, and positions that, you know, will help you, I guess, in, in the, uh, the offseason? Yeah, um, really important. You know, I, we spoke a little bit about Jack Dodd, our technical director, earlier in the season. Uh, Jack is someone I really trust to, to help build out that scouting department and wanted to get him on board at first to start that process. He's gone through and we've gone through a really lengthy process to add a director of scouting that we're in the final stages of. We've never had, you know, sort of three kind of key people on, on the technical side. Um, you know, for us, we'll look to build out the scouting department and, and, and probably have scouts on the ground in some different markets, you know, across Europe and across South America as well. We're on track to accomplish that this off season. And then there's other areas that we need to continue to look at to support as well. You know, whether that be on the strength and conditioning side, whether that be on the medical side, whether that be on, you know, the, the analyst side. So we're looking to do all those things. Um, I believe we've got a, a pretty clear vision in terms of what we need to accomplish this off season. Yeah. Um, I know another issue that was lingering through the season, especially the last part of the season was uh, the situation with Ivasic and his suspension. How did that end? How is that situation with him moving forward? Yeah, I think it was, was pretty public uh, in terms of the suspension. And like I said, um, just to point on specific players, but we've got to have total buy-in from every player, you know, and we've got to have every player, you know, want to be here um, and want to sacrifice for their teammates and the players around them. Um, so that goes for every player in the locker room. Uh, in terms of his personal situation, he has asked to leave the club. Uh, we will look at what's, what's best for him and what's best for us going forward, um, you know, and, and we'll deal with it this offseason. Yeah, the thing is, those those elements go goes hand by hand with your goals of setting up expectations and and the culture of the team and finding those new players for spots. I mean, you don't have. Do you feel that's actually the question? Do you feel that you have enough room to manage the roster around with the players that you got committed, the players that may or not have extensions, and the money that you can use? Yeah, I think so. I think, like I said, the roster has been in a little bit of a transition. We've also had a, a big change to, to the head coaching position. So clearly there's some change happening here and some transitioning happening here. And we all know at times that ch change isn't always the easiest for each person. Um, you've got players that have a short career. Sometimes players want different opportunities. We have to look at what's best for the group. We really do. Um, and I think all of the decisions that we make will keep that in mind. Um, whether that's staffing or whether that's player acquisitions or whether that's player movement. All right. One last question. 
You talked about Christian Ombret as a sizable offer came in for him uh, summer window now. If the offer of that size came in again for him, is that something you guys would consider? I would be the first to tell you that would speak quickly with Christian and, and his representation to ask him what they want. That was not an easy decision at the time. For Christian, that had a great opportunity. What I would say is when one opportunity ends, sometimes another one begins. And for me, for a player like that, the level of maturity and leadership that, that grew with him and how important he was for us to finish the season uh, shows a very, very different side of him. So I think it's those types of players <clears throat> that we want to try to build around. And Christian showed a, di a different side, you know, and what this club means to him as well. So I can't speak highly enough about how he handled that situation as a professional. Okay, we'll wrap it there. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Ned. Thanks. Thank Thanks a lot. Thank you, Ned.